welcome to Linux Mate. Thank you for watching. This is part one of what I hope to become an extensive series serving as an introduction to the C programming language on the GNU Linux platform. If you've always wanted to learn C programming on Linux but weren't entirely sure where to start, you've come to the right place. Uh, let me say quickly, this course is intended to be approachable by new programmers and students. Um, thus, part one of this series is simply an introduction to programming, the GCC compiler, the structure of the course, etc. Uh, we won't get past writing a simple uh, Hello World program in this video just to test our setup. If, uh, if you're an experienced programmer and you want to jump straight into coding in C, you may want to either watch this video at a faster speed or simply skip to the next video in the series. Uh, my plan is to release one video per week, uh, so if part two is not yet available, it will be shortly. Um, I'm going to set up a playlist for the series as well. Uh, if you're relatively new to programming, I would uh, strongly encourage you not to skip ahead uh, into the uh, coding without going through this introduction because we're going to uh, give you the context you need to follow along for the rest of the series. So before we go too far, we need to answer the question, what is GNU? Uh, the GNU project was established in the 1980s by Richard Stallman. Now, Stallman is one of the most brilliant and influential programmers of all time. Um, he uh, started the GNU project to write a brand new free operating system that could be shared and, modi uh, and modified without proprietary licensing restrictions that Unix and other commercial operating systems at the time had and still have today. The GCC compiler that we will use in this series uh, to create our programs was originally developed by Stallman it has been improved and developed by thousands of volunteers from all over the world over the past 35 years. Uh, I would encourage you to go to the GNU.org website and read up on the GNU project and the Free Software Foundation if you haven't done so already. It's very interesting. The next question we need to answer is why another C tutorial? Uh, C is one of the most well-documented languages around with massive amounts of online learning resources available. Um, so this is a fair question. Uh, there are a few reasons why I decided to uh, create this series. Many C tutorials are cryptic, generalized, or um, incomplete, and given the age of the C language, a lot of these uh, resources are also fairly dated. Although uh, an experienced programmer is able to navigate this landscape and find the information they need, uh, this is quite be, uh, it can be quite confusing and even intimidating to a newcomer. Uh, so I want to address uh, these issues in several ways. The, the first of which is I want to focus on not generic ANSI C, but rather a specific and probably the most widely available C compiler, the GNU GCC uh, compiler, as well as the Linux programming API. Um, this will help eliminate confusion about differences in compilers and operating systems, APIs, etc. Uh, problems that a lot of new users run into when to first learning C. Secondly, I will focus on what I believe to be the simplest solution to any problem. Uh, there are dozens of ways to accomplish nearly any programming task, but my goal is to, um, isn't to simply present you with all options or even the most efficient option, uh, but rather to give you the simplest approach that's easiest to understand uh, so you can get up and running as quickly as possible. And thirdly, uh, we'll aim to um, provide you with everything you need to learn programming on Linux. Since most tutorials are as generic as possible and C is so portable, uh, they usually don't cover things like creating color text in the terminal or uh, interacting with databases or communicating over a network, other things uh, which have different implementations on different platforms and operating systems. Since we'll be focusing on one platform, the GCC compiler on Linux, we can explore some of these topics earlier, which will help um, make your programs more interesting sooner and more exciting. And lastly, um, I've kind of said this already, but my ultimate goal is to make C as approachable, easy, and enjoyable as possible to learn. Uh, feel free to give me feedback throughout the series regarding how well I'm achieving these objectives. So why would someone want to follow this course? Um, first of all, if you're studying computer science, you'll probably be required to learn C. 
Um, so this could be a good resource for that purpose. If you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to write a software for Linux, particularly uh, system type software such as uh, daemons, network software, even if you eventually intend to develop in C++, uh, getting a good solid C foundation uh, on Linux is essential. It's even more important um, if you'd eventually like to contribute to free software projects such as GNU or the Linux kernel. Lastly, um, and I readily admit this one sounds a bit controversial, but learning C teaches you how to be a real programmer. And I should probably say learning C uh, makes you a better programmer, more so than other languages. Um, I'm not saying this to cast uh, developers who write in other languages as inferior, um, far from it. Uh, there are ama uh, many amazing uh, Python, Java, C Sharp developers who develop excellent software. Most modern languages have their purpose and are ideal for large numbers of projects. Uh, what I really mean here is uh, you learn how the machine works much more closely when you learn C. Um, you uh, have the full power of the machine at your disposal, but you also have uh, more details to worry about, um, which are heavily abstracted away in most languages. Things like memory allocation and management, exception handling, string data types, um, which most developers in other languages take for granted, uh, just not, not part of C. Uh, it is your job to implement this stuff yourself, which gives you a lot of control, but also gives you significantly more opportunities to make mistakes. But in exchange, um, you can execute assembly code in line from within C. It gives you direct control of the CPU. You have uh, direct access to memory addresses and pointers, uh, bit level control of data, uh, and even the ability to manipulate hardware registers. So I've said a few times now that this course is aimed at being accessible to the beginner, but do you need prior programming experience to learn C from this course? Uh, absolutely not. Um, all basic programming concepts and C syntax will be covered um, with no assumption of prior knowledge or experience. But having said that, uh, some programming experience would give you a huge advantage. Uh, knowledge of the general uh, concepts of variables, looping, functions, input, output, etc. Uh, will make it easier for you to focus on understanding the C syntax and Linux APIs, uh, but that does not mean that prior knowledge is a requirement. Especially for beginners, uh, this is true. Practice, practice, practice. You can uh, learn how to learn to program from a book or a course like this, but you can't learn to program that way. Uh, you'll only learn programming by practicing yourself. And since C is one of the most challenging programming languages to learn, especially for a beginner, practice is even more critical to your success. If you are new to programming, I would encourage you to seek out a fundamentals in programming course to work alongside this one. Uh, this will help you uh, supplement your learning and fill some gaps that we don't have time to cover uh, as thoroughly here as you would on any fundamentals in programming course. A couple more quick things. Before you uh, commit to this, uh, make sure you're committed to putting in a lot of hard work. It won't be easy, but there will be, uh, it will be incredibly rewarding. Um, also, don't expect instant results. Um, there'll be times when you feel like that you're making almost no progress at all. That's normal. Um, people who succeed in their programming journey are not the most um, intelligent, but it's the people who persevere through the challenges. Also, be comfortable not knowing things. You're learning something entirely new. Uh, a lot of what I say in this series, even this video, may seem confusing and foreign at first. Uh, don't get caught up trying to understand every little detail. Uh, just absorb the information. Uh, you can rewatch the videos. You can ask questions in the comments, other people, chat rooms, peers, experiment. There will be some things uh, you're just uh, going to have to accept that uh, you won't be able to fully understand just yet. That's okay. Um, things will become more clear over time as we pursue this journey. 
So how are we going to uh, structure this course? Um, we're going to start at the very beginning. Uh, we're going to learn um, how to use the compiler, um, how to create basic programs in C, uh, and then how to write uh, C programs for Linux. Um, each lesson will be in a, a similar format uh, to an online lecture. So each video will cover the content equal to, let's say, a week's uh, worth of study. Um, if you follow along and uh, really learn the material, uh, let's say for you one video per week, you do the homework assignments uh, and practice, um, within a few months uh, you'll be a competent novice C programmer. I haven't decided uh, how long uh, the uh, each video will be, but I'm guessing probably somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes uh, each. Most weeks we will cover several topics. Uh, during this time span. Um, I'll also recommend a small homework assignment each week as well. Uh, this, to, is a, this is a uh, tutorial and not a reference guide. Uh, and therefore, I'll be showing you the easiest way to do things. Um, so this is not an exhaustive look at everything that you can do in C and Linux, uh, in Linux um, but will uh, hopefully serve as a launch pad for your learning. Uh, so I'll be teaching uh, concepts, not memorization. And as I said, my goal is to release one lesson per week. Sometimes life and career get in the way of our hobbies. So um, all I can say is that I will do my best. So we'll see how we go. So where exactly do I intend to go with this series? In addition to teaching um, the basics in C and the Linux API, uh, I'd eventually like to take a look at some cool things like uh, networking, creating a GUI uh, interface in GDK, threading, processes, um, how to embed assembly code into your C source, and uh, maybe even look at writing some like Linux kernel drivers, look at some other kernel development um, related topics. Um, but before we get ahead of ourselves, uh, we're going to focus on learning the basics of programming and the C programming language. So what is not covered? Um, as I said, uh, we'll be focusing on Linux and C. So we won't be covering anything about Windows or Mac development. Although most of what we'll cover uh, is also applicable to Mac and other Unix style platforms. I also have no plans to cover uh, C++ in this series as of now, uh, but we'll see where we go with that. So what will you need to follow along with me uh, in this course? You'll need a real computer or a virtual machine running some version of Linux. Uh, if you don't have a preference, I'll recommend the Ubuntu long-term support or LTS um, release, which can be downloaded for free from Ubuntu.com. I believe the latest long-term support release at the moment is 2004. You can also um, run it inside VirtualBox on a Windows machine if you can't dedicate a machine to Linux. There are many videos on YouTube that will demonstrate how to do this, so we won't worry about that here today. Uh, you also need the GNU compiler, uh, a code editor. It can be any text editor as long as it doesn't embed metadata into the files. We need to be able to edit straight text files. And it would help to install the Git source control program uh, as well. All the software is free to download and use. One last thing before we get started. Uh, I know C has a bad reputation. Um, many new and experienced programmers alike find it intimidating. Uh, but you do not need to be a genius to learn C. Anybody can learn it. Uh, you just need the passions, passion and persistence to stick with it. But it is very doable. It's a challenge, but it's doable. And you do not need to be a genius to learn C. OK, now that we've got all of the uh, housekeeping um, tasks out of the way, Let's get started. Since this is a course for beginners, I need to talk, talk briefly about um, computer programs. A computer program is a collection of instructions that the CPU can execute to accomplish a task. The instructions are written in high-level programming languages, such as C, and a program called a compiler uh, converts this high-level language into object files or machine code. Uh, we then use a program called a linker to package these object files together into a single binary file that we can run as an executable program. So what is a programming language? 
A programming language is a set of instructions, constructs, and rules that define a syntax that can be converted into machine code the CPU can understand. So files containing code that complies with the syntax of a programming language are called source files or source code. Thousands of programming languages exist, although only a relatively small number are widely used. Most languages are fairly specialized, but some uh, are what we would consider general purpose languages, such as C. There are two primary types of languages, procedural and object-oriented languages. C is a procedural language, so we will be focusing on procedural and functional programming in this course. So what differentiates uh, C from other languages? We've kind of covered this already, but let's take a quick look at C. Uh, C was developed by Dennis Ritchie and uh, Ken Thompson, although I think Ken Thompson was more of the developer of B, C's predecessor. Uh, this was at Bell Labs uh, around 1971. Uh, C was created because uh, Ritchie and Thompson needed a higher level language to develop the Unix operating system in. This would allow for faster development and more portable code. Uh, C is still considered to be one of the most powerful programming languages today and is uh, the primary language used for system software development um, such as operating systems and drivers. Uh, but this kind of power comes responsibility. Um, but once you learn to harness this power, C gives you complete control over your system. So what does a C program look like? Now this is the code for the simplest C program that actually gives you some output. It's basically the traditional Hello World program uh, we almost always see in programming tutorials. So far be it from me to buck tradition. Uh, so let's analyze uh, this code line by line. Um, line one is an include statement and uh, started with a pound sign. Uh, this is what we call a preprocessor directive. But that is a topic that's too advanced to explain here. So just know that the pound include statement allows us to bring in other code from other files and use it within our project. Um, in this case, we're including the stdio.h file, which stands for standard input and output. This gives us access to the command we use later to print text to the screen. Lines three through six are enclosed in curly brackets, which is called a code block in C. And we call these code blocks functions and we give them names. Uh, this function is called main and is required to exist in every C program. This is the code block that is executed when your program starts. Uh, the int means the function returns an integer value or a whole number uh, when it completes execution. Uh, we'll discuss this later in the lesson as well. So lines four and five fall between the two curly brackets and they represent the actual statements our program will execute. So line four calls another function called printf um, and uh, passes it a string of text characters uh, to print onto the screen. So the printf function uh, exists in the standard IO library and has already been written for us. Then line five uses the return statement to pass control back to the operating system. A couple of quick things to note, uh, C is a case sensitive language, meaning that capital A and small a are two different characters. And secondly, if you notice, the executable statements uh, inside a C function must end with a semicolon, which is the line termination character in C. Okay, let's write this program to test our setup and make sure our compiler is working correctly. Also, it'll give us an opportunity to go through the process of writing code and compiling and running it. Um, so that we'll be using these steps a lot throughout this course. So let's have a look. I already have a place set up to save my code files, so I'll just create a new file called hello.c. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, the Vim text editor because it's my personal favorite, but feel free to use any editor that you like. Just make sure that it saves as pure text files instead of uh, adding metadata like word processors, etc. 
So let's go ahead and create the file hello.c and then um, we will include the stdio.h file, our standard input and output. Then we'll create our main function. And our code will go here between the curly braces. And so we use printf to print to the screen. Hello, Linux mate. And then this uh, backslash n is um, is actually a new line character. And then we'll use the semicolon to terminate the line. And then we will say return zero. So that looks good. So now we can save our file and we can compile it and run it. So to compile a C source file, we will use CC and they specify the source file name, which is hello.c o to specify the output file and we'll give it the name hello. Here and there's the file and we can run it. As you can see, the program works. Congratulations, if you were following along, you've just written and compiled your first C program. You've completed your first step on the journey to becoming a competent C programmer. Your first homework assignment is quite simple. Uh, simply write a program that prints a cool pattern of text characters onto the screen, print at least three lines of text. Uh, I'll so show you the solution at the beginning of the next lesson. If you'd like to download a copy of the source files for this course, you can use the git clone command on the screen. Um, so uh, we'll be covering more about using git for source control later in the course, but if you use the command on the screen, uh, that will download a copy of all of the files associated with this course in the current directory. So that wraps up the first lesson in our C programming tutorial series. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I will do my best to help. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please like and subscribe. We'll be back next week for part two of the GNU C Linux tutorial series. So hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when new tutorials are released. Thanks so much for watching. Please join us next week when we'll get serious about writing some code. Sounds exciting. See you then.